Well, from the numbers, we can see that Asia, uh, it's doing better in terms of its share of the PE deals, but it's still a China story, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a lot of it is a China story and a lot of it is a COVID-19 story, right? Um, China is perceived by investors as having done better with control, controlling the virus than other jurisdictions have. So China is open for business. So investors think it's attractive. Oh, what is the outlook? I mean, even at 20 percent of the pie, it's still lagging behind Europe and the U.S. Some say that perhaps it's a region's more demanding exit environment that's holding it back. Yeah, the, there's the demanding exit environment. There is also the regulatory issue, right? The the thing that we always uh, deal with, regardless of where we're looking at in Asia, whether it's India, Southeast Asia, or China, is, you know, are there regulatory constraints that don't allow for foreign investments or make it difficult for you to get your foreign exchange out of the country at, at, upon an exit? Uh, Marsha, much of the first quarter in private equity was, it was mostly about portfolio bailouts. It was about keeping cash on the sidelines. Is now the time to actually start deploying some capital and using that dry powder to snap up some distressed assets? Where do your clients sit now? Well, I'll say that my clients actually are quite active now, and we've seen a significant uptick from the beginning of July a little earlier than that. Um, we are we're running a co-investment process like right now where it is significantly oversubscribed. It's in the health, it's in the, the, the grocery retail sector. Um, and so that is a very popular sector. I think that people are willing to write big checks right now. When do you think those plain vanilla buyouts are going to come back? Um, well, we're, we're running two disposal processes for funds, and one of them is an auction process where uh, we've got a lot of funds, um, some of them U.S.-based, that are bidders in that auction. So I think that the buyout process, we're, we're seeing it coming. It's not going to be in the, you know, the bulge back at buyout right now. It's, it's going to be mid-market, but I think we will see a lot of that in the, the second half. We've been seeing with the COVID impact, there's been a lot of shocks, uh, particularly in the e-commerce, the tech space. There's a lot of pivot, interestingly, into to kind of domestic demand as well. Do you think these are some trends that are just are permanent now and here to stay, Marcia? So I think some of those trends are permanent. So um, we've seen a big uptick in, for example, Internet data center interest. So real estate funds are pivoting to doing Internet data centers and are pivoting to doing um, logistics, warehouses to support e-commerce businesses. And I think a lot of that is is more permanent. Um, uh, other things, who knows? We'll see. I'm just wondering whether funds are reorganizing and how they view the longer-term prospects arising from, uh, from the pandemic. And is there a sense that there could be more divestments going forward? Well, I mean, you know, with a fund, you always have um, divestments and you have you have acquisitions, right? So they'll be about about equal. Um, they are looking at um, situations where large companies want to sell off units and funds may acquire those units, so separate businesses. Um, the funds I, I work with are, are looking at a lot of those opportunities where, for example, listed companies need to divest a unit that does a somewhat different business in their core business. And I think you'll see more of those.